ma'am. Would you like to see your beautiful baby? Oh, he's so precious. Yeah. I guess you're right. He's not too bad. He looks like his daddy. So, where is the proud papa? He's around somewhere. Who knows? Well, he must have been handsome. Because this is one pretty baby. He was. And that's the problem. My other woman wanted him. I just couldn't take it. Not to mention, I can't cut it. I couldn't cut it loose. Here, you take him. Turn, turn what loose? Yeah. Ms. Nichols? Yeah. Hi, I'm with the Department of Human Services. I'm here to discuss the adoption procedures for your child. All right. Now, I do realize that this may be a little awkward for you, but in order for you to turn over your child's custody rights, I will need to ask you some questions so that I can finish the paperwork. All right. Okay. All right, Ms. Nichols, can you tell me who the father is? I noticed on the initial paperwork you left it blank. I don't know who the daddy is. Okay, um, I'll just put father unknown. Okay, and can you please tell me the reason for putting your child for adoption? Now, here are some choices. Finances, unlivable conditions for raising a child, rape, or no desire to raise a child. None of the above. Um, I'm sorry, Ms. Nichols, but none of the above is not one of the choices. Here, let me read them for you again. Finances, unlivable conditions for raising a child, rape, I or no... I heard you the first time. Put out whatever you want. Okay, um, well, we'll leave that question blank for now. Now, Ms. Nichols, as the birth mother, you have the right to name the child before the adoption or you can give up that right and let the adoptive parents name the child. No, I wanna name him. I wanna name him Michael. Hmm. Michael's a nice name. Okay, Ms. Nichols, um, the rest of this just states that you do realize that you are signing away all custody rights and privileges. And from this point on, you are to have no contact with your birth child. Now, your child is being placed with a reputable adoption agency, and that agency has located a family for baby Michael. Who are they? What do they do? Do they have money? Oh yeah, Michael will be well provided for. His adoptive parents are very affluent. That's good. They have a better chance at life than I had. Okay, oh, um, Ms. Nichols, if you would just please sign this form here. Again, this is the agreement that you are waiving all custody rights to Michael. I just hope one day Michael doesn't hate me. Goodbye, Miss Nichols.
you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I was trying to read before somebody rudely interrupted me. Why you gotta be so evil? Look, I was just trying to make conversation. You always off sitting by yourself. You'll never talk to nobody. I thought you might be deaf or something. All right. Look, whenever you get tired of reading that old book, me and some of the other kids are walking down to the drugstore before it closes to get some snacks and stuff. You're welcome to come. I hope your eyes fall out. Come on, y'all. Whatever. I can't stand this place. How in the world did I ever get here? Dang, I love my jacket. Y'all go ahead, I'll just catch up. Okay. okay. What's up, man? It's all right, except I've been waiting almost an hour to give you these keys. I know, look, Alicia and I have been planning this trip to Florida for months, man, so we really appreciate you letting us use the condo. Yeah, yeah, just make sure it's clean with my wife when I get there later this year. Gotcha. I should take those back as late as you are. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. I just overslept a little bit, that's all. Uh -huh. Yeah, I bet you overslept. <laughs> so tell me, brother, which was that? The dinner or the movie? Or did it turn into breakfast and dinner? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not thinking about you, Rico. You need to mind your own business. He ain't got no business. That's why he always up in yours. Just <laughs> You just mad because I don't want you. You couldn't have all of me. Look, I don't need to stop playing. <laughs> uh, by the way, did anybody call me this morning? Mm -hmm. Alicia called. Oh, yeah? Yeah. She said, tell my baby Justin thanks for last night. <laughs> Justin, you really need to leave that trick alone. And why? Because she ain't what she's cracked up to be. No. What do you mean by that? Remember when she was here last time? And she canceled on your little date? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, uh -huh. she got word from my producer that but she was chosen to cover the playoffs in Green Bay, that's <laughs> yeah, all. Okay. <laughs> that's what she told you. No, boo. Remember my girl? You know, Niecy, with the pumps and the bumps. Bu -bu yeah, big booty too. Well, she went to the Plush Club, and she saw your girl all snuggled up with KP. Yes, from the woods, baby, yes. I don't believe it. Alicia will lie. He don't believe it. Okay, they did a video about it. Crying in the woods. <laughs> hey, brother, <laughs> believe it. I downloaded it on the internet. Uh, I, don't, I don't like I don't. it like that. Dude, that's sick, man. I, I, she was the one doing it. Look, Jack, what's going down in Chicago, man? Mm. Well, believe it or not, for Chicago, besides the weekly homicides, things are pretty quiet. The biggest thing we've got is this Ida Jean Nichols case. You remember she had passed away. Oh, well, I didn't, I didn't know that. Miss Ida Jean passed? And she, you know, she was the sweetest person, man. You know, every time I went over her house to visit her daughter Bernice, she would fix me the biggest plate of food, and she'd make me eat every bit of it. <laughs> she made the best fried chicken. Yeah, mm -hmm. she did. Yeah, you know, she taught me how to cook. Yeah. yeah. Well, now the courts don't know what to do with her estate because they don't know who to leave it with. What about Bernice? You didn't hear? No. No. Bernice died a couple years ago. What? what? She had already done crack. Wow, wow, man. You know what? I used to tell her all the time that you know, she was never going to get off that stuff, man. You know, hoping that she would prove me wrong and beat it. Mm. I guess she just couldn't escape that grip it had on her. Man. Right now, Bernice was Ida Jean's only baby. So now the courts don't know what to do with her estate now that Bernice is dead. Oh, wow. But Bernice had a son that she gave up for adoption. Really? The lawyers say that Ida Jean's estate is worth $1.5 million. Got the and it doesn't include a Florida beach house, a mansion in Hollywood, and $2 million in an undisclosed bank account. Because Ida Jean was, she was balling like that? 
that just goes to show you can't judge a book by its cover, baby. She could have been my sugar mama. <laughs> she bought shares in um, Microsell, one of those like startup computer yeah. companies, one of those dot com things, and it blew up. Mm. Well, what about you know the the son? Do they anybody know how old he is? Twelve or thirteen, something like that. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Now I have to go. Thank you. See you, Jack. Course, In the morning. Oh, man. That's a whole lot of money. You okay, man? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. What's going on? Look, I need you to roll somewhere with me, man. Down to the Department of Children's Services. Mm. For what? I need to find out who the father of Bernie's baby is. Uh, Terry, can you give mm. us a second? Okay. Hey, don't you have something to do? I'm doing it. Okay, um, a private second. Yeah. You make me sick. Just because I'm a girl don't mean that y'all can't tell me. She's a girl? <laughs> Justin, what are you talking about being Bernice's baby daddy, man? All right, listen. If the baby is about 12 or 13, Mm -hmm. That means she was pregnant while we were seeing each other. So what, man? She was on drugs. She could be. She could have been with anybody. Yeah, I doubt that, man. No. We were engaged. All right, listen. When Bernice was pregnant, I told her that I wasn't going to get married to her unless she got some help. Mm -hmm. So she checked into a facility down in Springfield. And one night she just got so mad at me that she said she wasn't coming back. So, I never saw her again. You know? so why she didn't come back, man? She got a phone call from some girl that liked me back in the day. And she told her that we were kicking it real hard, man, and she took it hard, and she believed every word the girl said. Okay, what happened to the girl? <laughs> well, right now, she lives in New York and she works for a sports firm. Stop playing. Yeah. Alicia? Alicia. Wow, and she just believed her. And yeah, she believed every word she said, man. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't believe Alicia would do that. Well, I'm with you, man. Let's go find out what's going on. Thanks. All right? I got your back, bro. Appreciate it. I didn't know it could be so crazy in child services, man. Yeah. There had to be over 100 women in there. Ugh, man, I am exhausted, man. Look, we wasted a whole day's work and didn't get nothing accomplished. This is going to be this crazy, man. I might as well just leave well enough alone, man. <laughs> Come on, Justin, man. I know you. You're the type of brother that got way too much integrity. You'll go back to the checkout line because the cashier gave you too much money. <laughs> and besides, man, remember that fine tail caseworker? What was her name, Miss Chambers? Yeah. Mm. yeah. She sure was banging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she said she'll call you if she finds something out, too. And Lou, she probably just said that just to get us out of her office. Besides, how's she gonna call me? She don't even have my number. Oh, yeah, she got your number. I gave it to her. When did you do that? When we were walking out, I slid her your number. Dude, how you gonna give somebody else my number? Because you need a woman. Uh, Rico, just in case you haven't noticed, I have a woman. Man, a Alicia. Alicia's a freak, man. You need to drop her like a bad habit. Do you just go talk about my girl like that, man? I mean, come on, man, at least put some respect on it. I'm just saying, how you know she being faithful to you? She's in New York, you in Chicago. How you know she's not with some other guy when she's not with you? Alicia wouldn't cheat on me, man. She loves me, and I love her. And we're getting married. As soon as I could afford the house she wants. Mm-hmm. And the lifestyle that she wants. Man, you, you sound like Forrest Gump. I love you, Janae. Yeah, whatever. I'm just trying to look out for my brother, man. I want to see you get hurt. All right. Hey, right, man, look. On a lighter note, <laughs> I'm about to pick up Big Bertha because she's competing in this plus-size twerk competition. You want to come? No, no, man. I'm, I'm good. I'm just going to go around to the restaurant, man, and uh, get things started for tomorrow. You sure, man? Uh, yeah. Twerking, brother? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's going to be on. Yeah, I'm good. All right. All right. You good? Peace. to let you know I have to cancel tonight's dinner date. Since I'm here in Chicago, my boss wants me to go to Soldier Field and do a one-on-one -on -one with Kadeem Perry. I'm so sorry, baby. I promise I'll make it up to you. I love you. Bye.
Saying that the only one you want is me That's cool, I can dig that But can you tell my heart's not here There's no way I could ever give you all of me Only fools are optimistic When they truly know that love's not here Now I'm the first of all To admit I'm probably wrong To take advantage of the situation <clears throat> May I help you? As a matter of fact, you can. What are you reading? A book. Or do you not know what a book looks like? I know you didn't just try to come for me. Look, I meant what is the book about? Look, little girl. I don't have the time or the effort to deal with you. What do you want? I want to know why you always walking around here like you the Mac. Some highfalutin wannabe black Justin Bieber. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This boy can smile. Oh my gosh, I know there's a guy somewhere. I'm Veronica. Michael. Ooh, Michael. That's nice, like Michael Jackson, right? <laughs> you and I must make a pact. We must bring salvation back. Where there is love. I'll be there. All right. Man, that used to be the cut. I hate that he died. But you know, you're real good. I didn't know you could sing. Thanks. I guess there just isn't a reason to sing around here. Yeah, I get what you mean. How did you get here anyway? Huh? How did you get in here, in this facility? I mean, most of the kids I know that end up in a group home come from poor folks. I grew up in the hood. But I ain't never seen anything like you on the south side. My, uh, my parent gave me up for adoption when I was a baby. I was adopted by the Lesters, a very wealthy family. Lesters. Wait, you mean them Lesters that own all of those car dealerships? Man, you were loaded. So, I don't know where did you end up here? So, one day, our chauffeur picked me up for baseball practice. And as we headed home, I began to see smoke billowing from the roof of our house. And by the time we got to the driveway, our entire house was on fire. I saw Dad out on the porch. He was crying and shouting to the fireman. They were trying to keep him out of the house. But Mama was trapped inside. Dad finally told the fireman that he was going there anyway to try and save Mama. Dad never came out. Mom and Daddy, they both died in the fire. Yeah, it's, it's deep. Your dad loved your mom so much that he risked his life to save her. Yeah. So, you didn't have any other family that would adopt you? Didn't they leave you in inheritance? The only family member I have left is on my father's side. My Uncle Richard. Uncle Richard is very evil. When mom and dad died, he hired a legal team to challenge the inheritance they left for me. They argued that since I was adopted, that I wasn't a rightful heir to the inheritance. Uncle Richard paid some people off, and they ruined his family. I was flat broke, with no parents and no home. Hey. Yeah. My mom was an only child with no living family, so I went into foster care. So why didn't you just stay in foster care instead of coming here to the orphanage? Well, afterwards, they sent me to the home of a Pentecostal preacher and his wife, Mama Heston. I loved that woman. She was so sweet and could cook. <laughs> so what happened? Well, the good reverend wasn't so good. He used to beat on Mama Heston. One day, he started in on her, and I came from behind and beat him down with my baseball bat. Thank God, I don't like ugly. I gonna get you. When Mama Hester came home, the Reverend called child services, and I was sent here the same day. I'm pretty sure Mama Hester appreciated me for what I did for her. She just never had the courage to speak up. Man, I thought I had drama in my life. No wonder you don't talk to nobody. But you know, I really admire how you fought back when old boy tried to beat up on Mama Hester. I wish I could be that strong. You can. I mean, I finally had enough. 
And when you get to that point where you've had enough, you'll fight back. So, you got me to tell you all about me. How did you get here? Well, my mom committed suicide when I was 10. And I never knew my dad. So, like you, I ended up in foster care. You know, my first foster family, they were real cool. But they already had six kids of their own. So then I went to my next foster family where my foster mother beat me real bad. It was all over the news. I'm surprised you didn't see it. Anyway, after the whole ordeal of being beaten and humiliated on the news, I finally asked my social worker if I could be put into an orphanage. So here I am. What's up? Hey, hey Butch. Um, I want to introduce you to my new friend, Michael. I don't know Michael. He the one to act like he don't know nobody. Yeah, well, Michael is just telling me, you know, how he used to be rich and stuff. And his dad was under them lessons. Hmm. The way he at now. Guess all things come to an end, huh? Michael. Hey, let me holler at you right fast. Well, can't you see I'm talking to Michael? I said, let me holler at you right fast. Okay. I gotta go, Michael. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Don't you ever disrespect me. Latrice can wait on her. Uh uh. Latrice got a date. Why are you looking at me like that? To the kitchen. What? To the kitchen. To the kitchen. What? To the kitchen. Dude, I'm gonna really need you to use your head for more than just a head wrap. What are you talking about, Terry? I'm talking about we hired Mother Johnson to help with Justin's surprise party. Ah, uh, I totally forgot. Damn. Okay, well, remember your deposit? So no, you weren't gonna get no money. Hey, yeah. <laughs> oh, Rico, I just want to say thank you. Remember with my deposit for my operation and stuff. Operation? Sir, I didn't know you were having an operation. You know. Don't get yourself but together. It's, it's, it's poison. Excuse me. No, you can't fit through here. Hey, what's up with Terry? Look, man, I, I promised Terry I wouldn't say nothing. Hey, when did that ever stop you? Come on. All right, man, if you must know, if you must know, Terry got six toes. And she had one unremoved. Ooh, I told you. Maybe I need to mind my own business. Well, hello, 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 everybody. Hey, baby. Hey, Bernie. Hey, Hattie. Now that bingo. Now, yes. Yes. Who is that? Hey, hey Mama Justin, how you doing? Justin, how you doing? I'm good. Well, look at you. You just as cute as you always be. <laughs> oh, Mother Jones. You know, I remember when you was five years old and I used to babysat you. Really? You babysat <laughs> And you used to love you some Wanda Woman. <laughs> 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 you start spinning around like Wanda Woman <laughs> trying to activate your powers. <laughs> oh, and down. tear my house up looking for that invisible <laughs> <laughs> airplane. <laughs> Not Wanda Woman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sounds like Lil Justin was trying to get in touch with his feminine side. Oh, Ricardo, Ricardo. You was always such a uh, special child. Special? Uh, you ain't still uh, peeing on yourself, is you? 
Oh, now see, because if your ears still pin on yourself, don't worry about it, baby. Uh uh. Because I still keep that spare pair of drawers right here in my pocketbook. Really? Still fit. Look like it's missing. Really, Mother John? Oh, wow. oh yes, baby. <laughs> Oh, Mother, you are so hard to Terry, <laughs> it's so good to see you laughing, baby. Mm. Cause you sure enough cried enough over that sorry excuse of a man you decided God. to marry. Got Ooh, it. that old low down Jimmy Lee. Jimmy Lee. Jimmy Ooh, Lee. Is he still with that Asian woman? Mother Johnson, you really need to mind your own business. <laughs> now, I just don't understand why you keep picking these old no-good men. Why is that? Baby, you need to find somebody who's going to treat you right. Right, that's right. Like who? Now, I ain't find no good man. Oh, it's a good man right here. Like who? Just? No. no. Just a got a girlfriend. Plus, he's... That's nasty, mother. Oh, it's my like goodness. Brother. I was not talking about Justin, but while we on the subject, Justin don't need to be fooling with that fast tail gal he fooling mm. with. Uh, 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 That's right, what I said. Now, what come I on, baby. Now, you was too good for that gal now. She done been with every man in Chicago. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> mother Johnson, you mother saw Johnson. the line, too? Uh, yes. That, oh, you need to on. find you a good, wholesome gal. Wholesome. That's what you need, baby. Oh, okay, Mother Johnson. <laughs> now, Mother back to you. I wasn't uh, even talking about no Justin. Who are you talking about? Rico? Rico? <laughs> what? Yes. Rico is immature, he is uncaring, and he is not sensitive. I need a man that I can talk to, Mother. I need mm. a sensitive man. Not no player, wanna be player. I want a man that knows how to get into his softer side. He know how to do that. All day. <laughs> Mother? Yes, baby. Let's go to the back so we can plan this party. Well, I can't finish drinking my coffee, baby. Thank you. You planning the party, Terry? Um, my family reunion. Mother, let's go f plan the family reunion. Well, all right, baby. Right. There you go, Mama Oh, thank you, Justin. All right, Mother Ooh, I had too much of that cake. <laughs> you got too much cake. She didn't feel that. <laughs> she didn't feel that. I. <laughs> I should only be in here a few minutes. If you would, make a loop around the block. You know you look sexy as hell with a skirt, girl. <laughs> Thank you, baby. No sense in waiting love. It's love Now can we speak honestly? See, I never was your type, girl. We're out together, you get nervous. Plus your friends couldn't stand me I'm not quite Mr. Perfect But I'll do my best when someone's worth it <laughs> Hello everyone! Hello! 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 I cannot wait for it to air. Baby, can we talk? Let's go over here. Look, baby. I'm getting kind of tired of being stood up all the time. I know, sweetie, but when my producer calls, I have to go where the story is. Felicia, I thought you were on vacation this week. I mean, isn't that the only reason why you came to Chicago to see of me? Of course it is. But, baby, I had no idea the network was going to call me and ask me to do a story here. <sighs> Look, baby, I know I have not been giving you the time and the attention that you need, but don't you think it's time that we end this long distance thing? Baby, so, so what are you saying? You ready to get married? Oh, baby, I'm so happy. You know, I've been wanting to hear that for the longest. I mean, I wasn't really talking about getting married. I mean, not just yet. Baby, I'm talking about you moving to New York with me. Alicia, I haven't had this conversation before. Look, first off, I don't believe in shacking. Secondly, I'm not moving to New York. My business is here in Chicago. 
baby, you can do what you're doing here anywhere. Besides, maybe you need a more professional job. I spent all that money for you to take the medical school entrance exam. <laughs> and baby, you almost got a perfect score. Justin, you can go to medical school in New York and maybe we could be together. And then you can get rid of this godforsaken place. Now look, no, going to medical school is your idea, not mine. I like it here in Chicago. And I like my restaurant and my customers. Baby, aren't you tired of living hand to mouth? I mean, one day business is up, the next day is down. And then when you get into financial jams, I'm the one that has to bail you out. Look, Justin, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Give my baby. <laughs> you just so sensitive. Oh, yes, you're me. Sensitive? What is that supposed to mean? Justin, I'm sorry. <sighs> Look, how about I make it up to you? Why don't you come by my hotel suite tonight? And I'll call room service and order your favorite meal. And we can watch a movie, a romantic movie. Just you and me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, baby. Well, I gotta go meet with my agent. I'll uh, see you tonight? Yes. So you gonna let her get away with it again? Rico, look, you need to mind your own business. Oh, mind my own business. So it's like that now? Yeah. Okay, you know what? Mr. Mind My Own Business, when she hurt you, don't come crying to me. Rico, that's enough. You know what? It's cool. I'm gonna let you do you. Thank you. But I already told you what's going on. Man, you gullible. Hey, Veronica. Uh, hey, Michael. I didn't see you there. I know you're not doing chores around here. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd stop being such a jerk and actually do some work around here. <laughs> I'm trying to be a team player. Besides, I don't want to be known as the black Justin Bieber, dude. <laughs> Boy, you crazy. <laughs> well, I better get back to my chores. Wait, Veronica, before you leave, can I talk to you for a moment? Okay, but make it quick before Butch comes. Come Veronica, that's what I want to talk to you about. What's up with you and Butch? I mean, it seems as though every time he comes around, you start acting all funny. Almost like you're scared of him. Scared? I ain't scared of no Butch. Well, if you're not scared of him, then how come every time you see him, you start getting all jumpy? Well, Michael, Butch is helping me. He told me that I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm actually supposed to be back in foster care. I don't want to go back to foster care. So he's letting me stay here without reporting me back to the DHS. Veronica, if I asked you something, would you be honest with me? Sure. Is Butch beating you? <laughs> Butch beating me? Boy, you crazy. Ain't no man gonna beat on me. Excuse me, do you know where I can find Michael Lester? Uh, I'm Michael. Hi, um, I'm Sandy Chambers. I'm a social worker from DHS. Can I talk to you for a moment? Uh, everything's going just fine here. I mean, if you need to investigate anybody, it's the warden of this place, Butch. Oh, well, I'm not here to investigate the orphanage. I just want to ask you a few questions. Questions? Mm -hmm. About what? Well, there's a lady who died recently. 
Ida Jean Nichols. Do you know her? Well, Miss Nichols left a trust fund for her grandson, a, a fairly large one. Okay, but what does this have to do with me? Well, according to our records, this grandson would either be adopted in foster care or possibly in an orphanage. There are 30 boys that fit this description and you're one of them. Really? Michael, we'd like for you to take a DNA test to see if you're the grandson of Ida Jane Nichols. I'm sorry, Miss Chambers, thanks. Miss Chambers, but I'm not interested in participating in your test. Michael, before you say no, I think you should know the trust fund is worth a lot of money, and it includes the inheritance to the property. Ma'am, I'm not moved by money. I was adopted by one of the richest families in Illinois. Financially, I had everything I wanted. And in the end, I wound up alone with nothing. If you'll excuse me, I have chores in me. Michael, if you change your mind, don't hesitate to contact me. Okay. that I think I'm in love with. And it's blatantly obvious that she don't feel the same way. You know, I want to see her. Spend time with her. But she's always gone. Uh, even when she's in town, she's always gone on a special assignment. And I'm supposed to give up my business, move to New York, go to medical school just so her family can be happy. And on top of all of that, everyone seems to know that my woman is two-timing me by seeing some professional football players. Well, see, I was trying to tell you. Remember what I told you? Terry, that? Terry, please. Look, I do not want to hear your I told you so crap, all right? Save it. I wasn't going to say I told you so. I was just going to remind you that... Terry! Oh. Hey, Terry. Oh, my God! What is wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing. Big Bertha broke up with me, y'all. You mean? She got mad because when she came home from work, I didn't cook her no greens. <laughs> she said she gonna find a man that could cook for her. She mad because I ain't cook her no greens with fat back and pork chops and buttermilk biscuits with gravy and soccer to me cake and red Kool-Aid. She said she gonna find her man that they cook for and that love her. No, nobody want me, man. You guys are some of the most sensitive men. And they say women are sensitive men. Hey, hey, watch it. Oh, man. Man, what you working on, man? Hey, lady, I'm sorry. We're not open yet. Come back in an hour. Um, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm not here to eat. I'm Sandy Chambers from the Department of Children's Services. I'm looking for Justin Alexander. Hey, Justin, some lady here for you. Be quiet, Terry. Hey, Miss Chambers, you're looking good, girl. How you doing? Remember me? I'm Rico. Uh, thanks, Mr. Turner. But... No, I, stop with that, mister. It's Rico. I see you came down here to our restaurant to visit us, huh? Uh, Mr. Rico, it's so great to see you again. But this isn't a personal meeting. I am here to see Mr. Alexander on business, okay? Business? You here at 5 o'clock in the morning before we open. 
<laughs> okay, business. Hey, Justin, hurry up, man. Miss Chambers want to talk to you about business at 5 a.m. Miss Chambers, how are you? I'm well, Mr. Alexander. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I think I have some great news for you. Oh, oh. I hear this. Let me hear it. I need to hear some good news right about now. Well, it seems we found some adoption records in Springfield with your deceased girlfriend Bernice Nichols' name on them. Ah, that's great. Um, but there's no father listed on the record, so we don't know who that person might be yet. Okay, but if the boy's around 13, then, you know, that's around the same time Bernice and I were engaged. So, I mean, she could have been pregnant when she went to Springfield, right? Unfortunately, it's not that simple, Mr. Alexander. Uh, for one, there are at least 30 boys who fit the profile of someone who could be Bernice's son. Uh, secondly, because of the inheritance, Bernice's mom left her next to Ken. All the television and radio stations hoarding on and around the country, and every man in Chicago, it seems, is coming out the woodwork saying that they are the boy's father. Wow, then that's sad. Yeah. You know, I guess everybody's coming up with a scheme to get paid, huh? Yeah, I guess so. So, Ms. Chambers, what brings you by? Uh, Mr. Alexander... Uh, just call me Justin. Mr. Alexander is too formal. Okay, Justin. We've narrowed the number of men who could possibly be the boy's father down to 30, and you're one of those men. That, that, that's great news. Hey, I can have a baby. Yeah, hey. I could be a daddy. That, that, that's, thank you, Jesus. I've always wanted a child. And for it to be a son, too, on top of that. Oh. <laughs> um, Justin, there's one other thing. Uh, because of the media circus that surrounds the, the case, mm -hmm. and because of the inheritance, we're requiring all potential fathers to take a DNA test and undergo three weeks of psychoanalysis to determine if they're mentally stable enough to raise a son. Okay, that, that's cool. <laughs> He's stable. He's stable. I'll do whatever it takes. There's just one other thing. Um, the DNA test and psychoanalysis tests all together cost $10,000. Goddamn, $10,000? Man, we can get a DNA test down on 35th Street um, from my cousin Patty. Where am I going to get $10,000 from? That's a lot of money. Mm. I'm so sorry, Mr. Uh, you know what, Ms. Chambers? I don't even care about the money. I mean, if it's my son, I want him to be with me. I want to take care of him. So what if I sign some papers saying that, you know, if he's my son, that I won't touch any of his money? Oh, hold on, hold on. I just said you wasn't crazy. Don't do that. Um... Uh, that's not going to make a difference, uh, Justin. The judge has set this criteria, so he's not going to change his mind. I mean, I've been before him plenty of times, and trust me, he's tough. I am. I'm so sorry, Justin. Look, uh, here's my card, and um, if your situation changes, give me a call. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm. See you later, bear of bad news. It's all good, man. We'll figure something out, man. How, man? Miss Chambers said it's gonna cost $10,000. Now, wait, wait a minute. Ain't you the one that's always talking that stuff about we gotta have faith? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Where's your faith at, brother? Right, and you know, just the guy ain't broke, he got plenty of money. A whole lot. All you gotta do is just trust and believe. That's it. That should go with that trust and believe again, man. You know what? You're right. I love you, girl. I love you, too. <laughs> I don't trust her. Hey, and I got your back. I know. Okay? Yeah, right plenty of my brother, man. <laughs> we gonna figure this out, all right? Damn skippy. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's get this restaurant <laughs> over. Funny games. Let's get back to work. Didn't I say get back to work? Oh, I heard you. Then if you know what's good for you, you'll grab a broom or something. Look, man, you try to bully people around here, but I'm not the one. 
I seen your type before. Come here all tough, Tony. But they all run with their 12 between their legs. Well, guess what? Every dog has his day. And I swear if you ever lay a hand on me, I'll hit you so hard you won't even know what hit you. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> Miss Chambers, we weren't expecting a visit from you today. Just making my rounds, doing my yearly investigations. What were you doing? Uh, just showing Michael a few self-defense moves. You know, you can uh, never be too careful, right, Mike? Is that right? Michael's just a charming young man all around. We're happy to have him around here. Helps out with all the other kids. Pleasant disposition. He's even a mentor. Is that right? Indeed. Well, it seems like things are really working out here. I'm proud of you, Michael. Butch, I was just doing a drop visit. I'll be back later to finish the annuals. Um, Say, so Michael, have you given any thought to what we discussed earlier? A little bit. But we've tested over 20 boys and none of them have turned out to be the grandson of Ida G. Nichols. Why haven't you called me? I, uh, I lost your number. <laughs> well, sweetie, why didn't you just say so? Listen, I can't make you take the DNA test, but I really, really think that you should. I'll think about it. Okay, fair enough. Um, Butch, remember I'll be back to finish up my annuals. Make sure you're prepared. You got it. Let me work to your car. Man, did you see Butch and Miss Chambers walk in? He jumped like a scared rabbit. Yeah, that was so funny. And you, you're amazing. You know, Bush tried to get up all in your face and scare you, and you just looked at him. He was about to knock his head off. How do you do that? It's easy. I mean, when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you won't let nobody mistreat you. I want to do that, but I'm so scared. See, that's why he keep messing with you. See, men like Butch are like dogs. They can sense fear. And once they realize that you're scared, they prey on that. But if you ever stand up to him and let him know that you're not going to take it, I promise you, all the butcher's foolishness will end. You think so? I know so. Well, what were you and Miss Chambers talking about anyway? Something about taking a DNA test? Well, apparently some rich lady died and left an inheritance. The lady's daughter is dead, but the daughter had a child, a son, that was put up for adoption. Now they're trying to find him so they can give him the money. Yeah, I heard something about that on TV earlier. Last thing I heard is that they believe that the heir to the inheritance is somewhere in the child worker system in Chicago. Wait, Michael. Okay, what if you're the heir? Do you realize that you could be rich? I mean, you could get paid and get up out of this dump. Veronica, I don't care about the money. I came from a rich family. I mean, I know what it's like to have maids and fancy clothes and chauffeurs. I mean, I had all of that. And in about 30 minutes, it was all up in smoke. Who cares if I have all that money, Veronica? Still don't have a family. But Michael, they're looking for the father. And just think, what if you have a daddy out there who's willing to love you and take care of you? Come on, Veronica. Let's be realistic. I mean, that could never happen to me. My life has been nothing but a series of disappointments. Michael, why don't you just step out this time? Stop trying to understand everything and just trust and believe that God will work everything out. Veronica, I know this sounds crazy, but I'm afraid to trust God. I'm afraid to believe. It seems as though every time I start believing that something good is gonna happen, and then something bad happens. And Veronica, I just can't take being disappointed again. Michael, God never promised us that we wouldn't have problems, but he did promise us that he would be there throughout all of our problems. Just trust him. Trust the Father. Who is the Father? He's the one that loves you more than anything else. And he wants to come into your heart, Michael. Look, I gotta get back to my chores, but just think about what I said.
Lord, I want to trust you, but I just don't know how. Please teach me how to trust you. Show me how to believe. Michael. Michael. Michael, if you look with your heart, you'll be able to see me. Mama. I love you, Michael. Come here. I must go now. No, Ma. No. Don't leave me again. When I leave, you will be filled with His Holy Spirit. When His Spirit fills you, you will be able to see me forever. Just ask Him to forgive you for not believing. Ask Him to be your Lord. Lord, Lord, forgive me for not believing. Forgive me for not trusting in you. Please come into my heart and be my Lord. Step right up, step right up. Get some of Rico's Famous Barbecue. I got baby back ribs for the low, low price of $25, and I got turkey legs for $15. And I got sweet potato for all y'all. With that too, hey, you don't need none. You only got two teeth left in your mouth. No more sweets for you. Step right up, step right up. Boy, he is so country. <laughs> yeah, he is. Hey, but he bring this crowd in here. I ain't even mad at him. You think we got enough? Cause my feet hurt. Oh. I don't know. There's been a steady stream of people in there. The trace is going real good. You make sure you hold that sign right or you getting fired. I gotta go cook. You think we got enough, Justin, for your Dana test? A Dana test? Yeah, your Dana test. <laughs> I see what you mean. I like the way you cover that up. You know I hate people in my business, so. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> what the? Who put that sign up? That's the baby daddy. Who put that up there? Rico did. Look at him. He looked guilty. Rico, come here. Man, what do you want? I'm cooking. Just get out here now. Man, what do you want, man? You better not make me burn my barbecue pig feet. I'm telling you right now. You got me dropping my turkey leg. You know who put this up there? <laughs> <laughs> Just his baby daddy benefit. No, I don't know who put that up there. So you telling me you don't know how the sign got up there? I don't know how that All right. got up there. I did it. I confess. I did it. But I only did it because I wanted the people here. So if the people come, they'll give you money. And the more money you get, then you can pay for the Dana test. And then you can bring your baby boy home. Look, sis, I appreciate it. I really do. But you know, I'm a private person. I don't like everybody knowing my business. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. I just hope we raise enough money. Well, you know what? Ooh. I got about... I got about a thousand dollars. Brother, this has been a long day. A long day. But with the thousand dollars you gave me, excuse me, you guys. And I got four grand, that's about five thousand dollars. You better quit tripping. That's what put up here. So what are we gonna do, man? Look, y'all need to get a room. Huh? I mean, that's good, Justin. <laughs> that's good. Look, I got five thousand right here. I still need ten thousand dollars before I even have the value. And, and the DNA test. I still Justin, need five thousand more dollars. Don't do that. Don't go off and get all depressed on me. Do you really think that God would do something so amazing and give you five thousand dollars in less than four hours and not do the rest? Well, I know halfway God. God right. is not gonna give you half of the money and not provide the rest. You're right. You're right. No, no. All I need to do is just trust and believe. That's right. If you just and believe. Okay, baby Jesus. <laughs> hey, look. You can do it, man. It's gonna be alright. Jerry, let me get that foot. Come on now. I don't know why you hesitating. <laughs> oh, hey, damn. <laughs> Soon as God show up, here come the devil. 
I missed you so much, baby. Is that right? Yeah. All the while I was doing my story with KP, all I did was think about you. <laughs> yeah, right, baby. <laughs> Hello, Alicia. Hey, Rico. Hey, Terry. So, have you thought about what we talked about earlier this week? Yes, I have. And my decision has not changed. I'm not moved to New York, and I'm staying right here in Chicago. Okay, baby. So before you give in your answer, you need to know that I spoke with the Chancellor at Columbia, and he told me that he can get you a full ride scholarship and a graduate assistantship while you're in school, and because you Alicia. are my man, Alicia. he told me Alicia, Alicia, are you listening to me? This is not going to work out for you. What? Let's go inside the car. Oh, yeah, just get good. Come on. Sit back and relax. Let me finish getting this foot massage. You know ain't nobody rub these old dogs in years. <laughs> I'm gonna use up my head which for these bad <laughs> You upset, aren't you, baby? Damn right I am, Alicia. Look, I'm tired of coming second string to your career. And I'm sick and tired of you trying to change me, trying to make me into somebody I'm not. Also, I'm sick and tired of you two-timing me with these professional athletes that you keep having these exclusive interviews with. Yeah, yeah, I know about you and KP and your secret meeting at the Plush Club. Alicia, look, it's over. I'm not playing second string to your career, and I'm sure as hell not playing second string to some lame dude. Justin, I don't understand how you can act like this after everything that I've done for you. Here we go. Yes, here we go. I'm the one that helped you get this shop. Hell, I gave you the down payment. And don't forget, when your business was about to go under and your sorry-ass family wouldn't give you the money to keep it afloat, I was the one, yes, me, baby, I paid who you loaned back, you the money I paid so you, you wouldn't go bankrupt. And now you want to act all high and mighty and drop me like that? Like I'm some two-bit hoe from the projects? Justin, please. Baby. Baby, nobody knows you like I know you. Baby, nobody can please you like I can please you. Baby, you need me just like I need you. Think of all the things that we've been through. Don't you remember when we first met? How special it was? <laughs> yeah, I do. I remember that. But that was then. And this is now. Get the hell out of here, Alicia. Justin, if you think it's over, baby, you can forget that. I don't go down that easy. When you're looking at the mirror, tell me what you see. I don't know why, I don't know why, I don't know why. Biggest oh. enemy. So when you're looking at the mirror at the flex on, get your flex on, get your groove on. Well, all right, everybody, this is your boy Corey E. Bailey, a.k.a. Mr. Funny Man, and that was the late Sly Carrington with his multi-platinum song, Feeling Me. Now for your local news update. DHS investigators seem to be a little closer to solving the Ida Jean Nichols paternity case. Sources say that a 13-year-old boy at Glen Echoes Youth Facility finally agreed to take a DNA test, and authorities say that his sample matches that of the deceased mother, Bernice Nichols. Now, investigators are in a desperate search to find the father of the soon-to-be teen millionaire. Once the father is found, the boy will be entitled to an inheritance totaling $20 million in cash, property, and assets. Lord knows I wish I was that baby's pappy. <laughs> well, you're listening to WBE3. Lord Jesus, they didn't find him. That could be my son. That could be my son, and I don't even have enough money to have the paternity test. Lord, I know you hear my prayers, Lord. Please. Please bless me with enough money to, to have this DNA test done. Hey, what's up? Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm all right. Uh, how did you get in here? I know we're closed. Uh, and, uh, 
Terry well, and those guys are going. Well, Terry and Ricardo, they right outside the door. <laughs> <laughs> Feeding each other barbecue pig feet. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I told let Terry to give that boy a chance. Yeah. I guess she finally listened to me. I guess so. <laughs> you know, I'm happy they found love. You know, yes. that's nice. Yes. I just hope I can find love like that one day. Oh, well, you can, baby. You just got to stop trying to make love happen. Hmm. I mean, just slow down. Go with the flow. It'll come to you. Okay. Well, um, Mother Johnson is getting old, baby. You oh. mind if I have a seat? No, come on. Let's see. Now, Mother Johnson, mm -hmm. what do you mean by making love happen and, and going with the flow? Now, Justin, you know I didn't know you a long time, right? Yes, ma'am. And I uh, remember when you was with Bernice. And I remember when you was with Anitra. Right after you broke up with Bernice. Yes, ma'am. But her name is Alicia. Oh, uh, Alicia? Yeah, Alicia. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. Yes, Alicia. In any case, in both relationships, you was the one doing all the work. I mean, you carried Bernice around, doing everything for her. And instead of taking a break, baby, you went and jumped into another relationship with that Alicia. Now, you and Bernice ain't have nothing in common. And you and that Anitra, Alicia, show sure ain't have nothing in common. Both Bernice and Alicia was needed. Bernice, her self-esteem was so low that, that she, she needed you to affirm that she was somebody. And Anitra, uh, uh, Alicia, she was just as needed. Yes, she was. She needed to feel like you had to have her so she could feel important. Wow. Mother Johnson, that, that is so true. Yes, it is. It's so true. But you know what? Alicia did help me out a lot. Oh, I rest my case, Justin. I rest is my case, Justin. That gal wasn't no more doing to you, for you, to be a blessing to you than she was to stroke her own ego. Like, look at me. Justin need me. Justin gots to have me. That's what it was, baby. Now, with both Bernice and Alicia, mm -hmm. you was a codependent. Hmm. I mean, uh, you had to feel like they needed you. And they had to feel like you needed them. And that ain't healthy. No, it's not. In a healthy relationship, baby, both the man and the woman are self-sufficient. But they enhance one another. Uh, Mother Johnson, that's deep. Yeah, I know. How did you come so wise? Life, baby. <laughs> when you live as long as I have, you learn a thing or two. I, I hear you. <laughs> but I promise, next time, God is going to send you a woman who loves you for you and not what you can do for her. And that's going to come quicker than you think, baby. For real? It is. Hmm. I promise. Now, for what I'm here for. Okay. What is this? Oh, well, Justin, baby, that's a check. It's a check for $5,000. Yes, it is. Uh, that's what you need, ain't it? Mother Johnson, you, you saved my life. Oh, baby. Oh, Mother you know Johnson, now, my baby. now I'm going to have the DNA test done. Yes, you can. Thank yes, you, Jesus. Can. Mother Johnson. Yes. I promise you, I'm gonna pay you every oh, cent. Oh, come on! Back. I know you're gonna pay me back. Now get on out there and get that baby home. Go <laughs> ahead. I gotta get down to DHS. See Miss Chambers. All righty. <laughs> well, Miss Chambers, how you doing? I, I was just on my way down to see you. Really? Well, I'm gonna be getting on out of here. Leave you two alone. And remember what I told you, baby. Love gonna come quicker than you speck. Just gotta slow down. Go with the flow. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Mother Johnson. So, uh, Miss Chambers.
What brings you by? It's Sandy. Excuse me? My name, it's Sandy. Oh, oh okay. Uh, well, Sandy, what brings you by tonight? Well, I just wanted to come by and let you know that we found Bernice's son. Yeah, I heard that on the radio. I heard a little bit about that. Oh, I, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's okay. Um, all I really heard was uh, that he's living in an orphanage or something like that? Yeah. His name is Michael, and he's staying in a home for children without parents. Mm. The orphanage is really rough. Now, not the kids, but the living conditions. Really? Yeah. Justin, I know I shouldn't be telling you this, but the orphanage is under investigation. There's been reports of abuse by the warden, but we almost have enough evidence to arrest him. You know, that's sick. I hate when people take advantage of little kids like that and abuse them. You know, somebody like that should be put under the jail. I agree. You know, I wish I could run that facility. I mean, Justin, if you, if you saw those sweet children, you just want to run up to them and hug them and let them know everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Well, maybe one day you can be the, the, the warden of the facility. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I will. <laughs> but enough about me. What were you coming to see me about? Well, I had finally raised enough money to take the DNA test. <laughs> oh, are you serious, yes. Justin? That's great! <laughs> oh. oh, excuse me. That, um... I'm sorry, that wasn't professional. Oh, no, 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 that's okay. I kind of liked it. <laughs> that's sweet. <laughs> um, uh, Sandy, would you like to get a glass of wine with me? Sure, but under one condition. What's that? I buy the first drink. Okay, uh, we could definitely be friends. <laughs> <laughs> I think I like that. I never thought that I was asking too much To think that someone could love me just as much Yeah, I'm now I had a really great time tonight So did I, a really good time Um, good night Do you mind if I talk to Michael? Not at all. Alone. Oh, well, let me handle that paperwork we spoke about, and if you need me, I'll uh, be in my office. Thanks. Michael. Uh-oh. I don't like the sound of this. Oh, no, it's nothing bad. Actually, what I have to say may be good news to you. So first, I want to thank you for participating in the DNA test. You're welcome. 
But we have the results back, and it turns out that you are the son of Bernice Nichols and the grandson of Ida Jean Nichols. Really? <laughs> yes. If you remember us speaking a couple weeks ago, as the grandson of Ida Jean Nichols, you are the sole beneficiary to her estate, and it's worth over $20 million. Wow. There is a problem. The judge isn't sure how to award the money because you're a minor, so a search is being conducted to find your birth father. Wait, so does that mean if they find him, I get to leave this place and live with him? Maybe. The thing is, in order for your birth father to be a caretaker, the judge is ordering him to undergo three weeks of psychoanalysis to determine that he's mentally fit to take care of you. Plus, he'll have to take a DNA and drug test to determine that he has no chemical dependencies and that he is actually your birth father. That's a lot of stuff to do just to prove that you're someone's daddy. <laughs> yeah, it is, but the judge has to be sure that whoever is going to take care of you can handle the responsibilities of raising a son. I guess that makes sense. Yep. Have you guys found anyone yet? Well, initially there are 30 men that came forward who said they were your father. We've narrowed that down to five, and out of those five, one man has been determined to be your father, and he's actually undergoing the psychoanalysis right now. Oh my God, this is great. I could actually meet my birth father. Miss Chambers, this is actually an answer to my prayers. If all goes well, your birth father will be here this Friday. Thank you, Miss Chambers, for everything. <laughs> I'm just doing my job, Michael. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Miss Chambers. Hi, Veronica. Hi, Miss Chambers. How are you? I'm good. Uh, say, Veronica, if you ever need to talk, remember I gave you my card. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, looks like everything is working out for you. Getting ready to get out of this place, huh? Yeah. I'm so happy to finally get to leave this place and live with my real daddy. Veronica, none of this would have happened without you. Huh? How you figure? Come on. You taught me how to pray, believe, and trust in God. I prayed to the Father, just like you said. And he answered my prayer. Girl, what's wrong with you? Michael, I'm a fake. Look, this whole time, all I've been saying to you is to trust God and believe in God, and I haven't even been trusting him for myself. What are you talking about? Butch, I've been lying to you. And I know you can tell he's been beating me. Yeah. Well, Butch is also... She's also been making me do stuff with him. If you know what I mean. Oh my God, Veronica. What a nigga, because I swear if I ever seen my Michael, please, 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 Michael, Michael, please come here. Michael, come here. Give it to me. Look, you're about to leave this place. Do not blow it now. I'm about to leave this place. What are you talking about? Where are you getting ready to go? I got a letter from my cousin Jackie. So, when are you leaving? Tonight. Tonight? Yeah. I mean, Butch will be in his office all night working on paperwork. And I'm leaving right now, actually. He won't even know that I'm gone until tomorrow. And by then, I'll already be on the bus headed to Little Rock. I wanted to tell you bye. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you too. You better stay in touch. No, you better stay in touch. Don't get all up there with your daddy and forget about your girl. Don't cry, baby boy. We'll be together again. Just trust and believe. This Latrice, can I help you? No, Justin is not in. He should be in at any moment. Call back. MacArthur's rest. MacArthur's restaurant. 
No, he's not in. Yes, I'll be sure to let him know when he get in that you're interested in him being a centerfold for Playgirl. All right. MacArthur. Excuse me? Are you serious? <laughs> yes. All right. When he gets it, I'll be sure to let him know that you're interested in him being on your network. <laughs> yes, Ms. Winfrey. All right. Oh, oh, oh. And make sure you let my girl Gail know I said, how you doing? <laughs> All right. Ooh, how you sound? Yes. That is Wendy Williams, not Oprah Winfrey. I know. I watch Oprah every Monday through Friday on BET. How you doing? Shout it out. Latrice. What? Get back to work. Before you get this, quit hitting me with that damn horse hair. Terry, where Vic at? We getting slammed in the back. We getting slammed in the daddy room. You know what? I got it out. What's going on? Where you been, man? Oh, a little smoke break outside. A little smoke break? Yeah. Man, you better do me smoking in the damn unemployment office. Terry, come here. Hurry up. Look, the phone's been ringing off the hook. All these people here just because they think Justin might be that orphan boy daddy. You, you think it's crazy here? Child, let me tell you how Uncle Ray Ray called Collect last night. Talking about he got stock options ideas in Zimbabwe. Ah, That's messed up considering he locked up in prison without parole. Don't do that. That's my Christ. Man, you, your whole family is ghetto. Come on, man. You know what? I got you. Dude, <laughs> calm down, man. What's wrong with you? Hey, man, I'll leave out of the house this morning. As soon as I opened my door, this paparazzi kept out all over my, my yard, man. Like a pack of wolves. Asking me all these doggone crazy questions about, am I Michael's father? Man, I couldn't handle it, man. I panicked, so I jumped in my car and I took off. Okay. Yeah, so as soon as I hit the expressway, doing about 90, all of a sudden, Channel 7 newsman pulls up right alongside of me. The windows roll down. This reporter sticks his head out the window and starts asking me questions. And I'm like, what's wrong with these people? So I take a quick right, <clears throat> off the exit, bam! Ran into that embankment, man. That van ran dead into it. Oh my God. You all right, dog? Yeah, but I feel kind of violated, man. Come on, man. Hold on. Hey, excuse me. Excuse, uh, yes. Black Barbie. You think you get your job? Don't leave, though, because you're too scared. It's from Chicago Wind, sugar. But so thin, she got a hot ass to see to flirt. So what's up, Terry? So you want to start or me? You can start. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look, look, you guys, I know it's been crazy around here, you know, everything going on. And I'm sorry about that. Whoa. You guys aren't about to quit, are you? No, we just realized that you didn't came into this rich son and you may not have to do this restaurant jigga ma digga no more. Yeah, we thought you might want to do something like close the restaurant. Close the restaurant? No, no, I'm not closing this restaurant, man. I'm staying here until I have to, until I have to retire, man. Good. Yeah, I told you, Terry. You always starting stuff. Shut up. Yeah. Gossip too much. Fuck. Worse than Mother Johnson. You two are like my brother and sister. I'm telling you right now, here and now, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> that makes it wonderful. Now, you happy here, Rombe? Whatever, let's go, man. Get back to work. Silver yeah, y'all yeah, do have some work to do, though. Yeah, get to it. <laughs> How's my favorite person doing Better today? Better than you are, yeah. Hey, 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 man. It's rated PG up in here. Y'all about to make it rated R. Man, <laughs> don't nobody want to sit there while they eating their food, man? Get out of here. Yeah, okay. Remember, <laughs> this is a professional establishment. Thank you, Rico. <laughs> well, babe, I've got some great news for you. Ooh, let me hear it. You passed the psychoanalysis test. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> so when can I go pick them up? Hopefully in a week. Um, it takes that long to process his exit papers. A week? I don't know if I can wait that long. Well, I thought you'd say that. So, I set up a meeting for both of you this afternoon. Ooh, come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 h
Troublemaker since you've been here, boy. Oh, you ain't got nothing to say now, huh? Bet I smack fire at your ass you say something then, wouldn't you? I ain't done with you, boy. Visit now is over, ma'am. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm a friend of Michael Lester's. I desperately need to see him. It's important. How about I give you a little something something for your troubles? You got five minutes. He expecting a visit from DHS. Hey, Michael. I'm Alicia Saunders. Yeah, you look familiar. Well, I work for Sports TV in New York. Oh, that's where I know you from. Mm hmm Wait, so what are you doing here? I mean, we don't have any sports, except for a fight every now and then. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> What a good sense of humor for a little boy. Michael, there's something that I need you to know. Okay. The man that is supposed to be your daddy, Justin, there's some things that you need to know about him. Like what? How do you even know him? Justin is my ex-fiance. We were supposed to get married, but I broke up with him. Why? Justin is a bad man, baby. A real dog. He cheated on me all the five years we were together. Really? Mm-hmm. And the last time that I had caught him, I had had enough. So I told him that it was over. He became so furious. And he told me that I could leave because he had met some girl that works for DHS named Sandy. And he was about to get paid millions off of this child custody thing that he was involved in. Oh, Michael, I'll be okay without Justin. I just didn't want him to use you the way he used me. I'm sorry, baby. It's better that you know now how your daddy really is so you don't think he's some boss when he's really just a buster. Well, I told the guy that I would only be five minutes, so I'm about to go. I'll see you, Michael. Bye. Hi, Michael. I've got somebody I'd like you to meet. This is your father, Justin Alexander. Yeah, I know who he is. I know all about you. You're Justin, right? The ladies' man. No, I'm no ladies' man. I'm just a guy that's happy that I found my son. Look, Sandy, can I have a few minutes with him? Sure. Hey, Michael, I bought your glove. Wow, it's amazing. You look so much like BB. Come here. Come and give your daddy some love. Look, Michael, I know this is awkward. But I really do want to get to know you. What? So you can use me like you do everybody else? <laughs> Don't look surprised. I bet you do want to take me home. So you can get paid? Excuse me? Yeah, you heard me. I know all about you, Mr. Justin. Miss Saunders told me everything. Miss Saunders? I should have known her. Damn, Alicia. Well, Mr. Alexander, guess what? I really don't care if you are my daddy. You're a sorry excuse for a man. And even if you're the last man on earth, I will never go home with you.
Terry, would you stop? Stop what? Stop all that running around, man. It's just a surprise party. You making me nervous. I, I, just, I just want everything to be right. Girl, relax. I can relax. Hey, hey, I see somebody. I see okay, somebody. Get out! Get out! Get out! Don't say nothing! Don't say nothing! Okay, here we go. What the hell are you doing? What it look like I'm doing? I'm coming to the party. You messed up everything! Move! Get out of the way! Anyway, Justin was right behind me, so y'all might want to hurry up. Okay, everybody get out! Get out! He coming, he coming! For real! For real, for real! Everybody, everybody! Okay, I'm out! Look at him, he's gonna say hi to everybody. So, this is what you were playing with, Mother John. Mm-hmm, and Rico almost messed up everything. It ain't my fault that he knows he. Man, he knows he. Oh, no. Crazy. Wow. You know, with everything going on, I completely forgot that it was my birthday. You know what? I really appreciate it. Thank you. Come on. Who has to wait? Looking like I broke down the envelope. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you ever heard anything, man? No, I haven't. Yeah, I'm sure everything's cool. Yeah, Justin. You know what? I can see Sandy now. Coming through them doors, bringing Michael home. You can see that? Yes, I can, can see. You can see that, Miss Cleo? Shut up, her mom, man. Man, look, anyway. It's gonna be all right, bro. All right? Yes, sir. Terry. Hell no. That you can't do The devil! Look, you need to handle that. Handle that. Alicia, what are you doing here? It's your birthday, silly. I wouldn't miss this for the world. Aren't you happy to see me? Hell no. Get out. Come on, Justin. Can I talk to you real quick? About what, Alicia? We have nothing to talk about. I'm not leaving here until you talk to me. All right. Make it quick. Well, I just want to let you know that I have two tickets to Florida, and I have the keys to the condo that you gave back to Jack. Our flight leaves in the morning. Aren't you excited, boo? Are you crazy, Alicia? We are done, over with. And the stunt you pulled with Michael almost cost me. You don't even want to come home, all because of your foolishness. And you have the audacity to come in here and ask if I want to go to Florida with you. I wouldn't go anywhere with you, even if you were the last woman on earth. Not ever, and not now. I just hope Sandy can convince Michael that everything you told him was a bold-faced lie. Sandy? Oh, I see. So now that you got yourself a little nappy head, you call yourself through with me, huh? Well, I got a news flash for you. You can't live without this. I'm like crack. Once you've been with this, you always need another hit. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. Well, you know what Whitney Houston, God rest her soul, said about drugs. Crack is whack. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> uh, it's time for you to go. Let's go. Let's go, Barbie. Let's go. I think I saw Kadeem outside waiting for you. See you later. Boy, look at you. <laughs> you all grown up now, huh? Man, I thought you was going to give in. So you really over Alicia, huh? You dang right. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not about. letting her mess up my relationship with Sam. Hey, 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 hey. This video Hush. is from earlier today. After a five-hour standoff, Butch Reynolds, director of Glen Oaks Youth Facility, was apprehended. Reynolds allegedly abused six youth at the facility. When authorities came to arrest him, he barricaded the doors holding the youth at the facility hostage. After intense negotiations with CPD, he finally surrendered. Are you okay? When I first got down to the facility, Butch wouldn't let me in. So I had to call Detective Jack, and he came down with the Chicago Police Department. It turned into a standoff situation. Butch wouldn't open the door, and he was holding the children hostage. So finally, Chicago PD burst in, arrest Butch, they took him off to the police station in handcuffs, and according to Detective Jack, Butch will be in prison for a very 
very long time. Praise God! Yeah. But wait a minute, what about the children? Who's gonna take care of them? Well, you're looking at the new director of the Glen Echoes Children's Facility. Oh. I start full time on Monday. <laughs> God, look at that, baby. God gave you that job just like that. So, where's Michael? I was waiting for you to ask. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Happy birthday, Danny. <laughs> Wait such a long time for this. So are you hungry? You want something to eat? <laughs> no, sir. Look, Michael, I know you were raised by a very wealthy family. I don't have a lot of money. I do have a nice home and have people down here at the restaurant that love me just like family. And that's Terry and Rico. And of course, you know my fiance, Sandy. Yes, sir. What I'm trying to say to you is what I don't have in money I can make up to you with love. And son, you don't ever have to worry about me messing with your money. That's your inheritance. I just want to be your father. I love you, Dave. I love you too, son. Hey, you forgot something. You forgot something. Rico's always forgetting something. I love you, Dad. I love you, son. Michael! Oh, my God. Then happy birthday, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Now, listen, let, let me introduce y'all to my new daughter, Veronica. Veronica. <laughs> now, let me tell y'all, on Wednesday night, I was on my way back from Bible study and I see this little old gal right here, excuse me baby, right here walking down the street by herself with her bags in her hand. Now, I knew something wasn't right. Mm. So I say, baby, where's you going? And she say, to the bus station. And I say, ah, you look like you need a hot meal. Then I say, yes, yes. and uh, I, I took her home with me that night, and she been with me ever since. And Miss Sandy there, she say she could stay with me as long as she want to, didn't she, baby? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and your Michael. Yes, ma'am. Oh my goodness! Ever since my baby been with me, all she been talking about is Michael. Michael this and Michael that. <laughs> so if my baby been talking about somebody so much, you must be a very special person. He is very special. Michael is my son. Oh, Jesus. I told you, he answers prayers. He gonna work it out for you. Didn't I tell you that? Yes, you did. Oh my God. So that means we gonna be seeing a lot of you, huh? So, so that means you'll be around here with me and my daddy? I guess so. <laughs> I like your glove. Thanks. My daddy got it for me. Can you see it? Mm. You remember what I told you, babe? Stop trying to make love happen. It'll come to you. You just got to go with the flow. Mm -hmm. That's funny. <laughs> come on, girl. Go. Yes. Work it out. Go. Yes. Go, girl.